I am here. And today I'm going to talk about my favorite prehistoric wildlife from the Yuka. Which means it's, it's a Visually a series, yay! Now, let's start off with, well, overall, or is in terms of the United Kingdom's importance to Paleontological community. That's pretty much where the first dinosaur to be named was found in. Why is he T Rex? <coughs> Triceratops? Eh. Nope. It was Megalosaurus. It was first discovered there by this Englishman called William Buckman. And of course it was at that point, since they didn't know what they were at that point, first Gideon and And of course, it was Gideon and Richard Owen who did most of the item. This is probably how it would go. Um, Mr. Matt uh, is. Oh, yes, great. Yes, my dear Dr. Oak. Uh, Miss... Mr. Buckley found this... Oh. This... Jawbone. This quarry. Oh, more... I think I'll name it... Dinosauria. Oh, terrible lizard. Well done, my dear Dr. Oak. Yeah. And also, there's a quite uh, which I mentioned before in my obsession with dinosaurs video. Of course, that toy, of course. Is in a in a course that Megalosaurus living between 175 and 160 million years ago during the mid Jurassic period, while Iguanodon, the first plain dinosaur to be named back in 1856, by none other than Gideon Mantell. That's besides the point that it lived. It lived between 135 and 125, maybe 120 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. So 25 million years after Magnolosaurus went extinct. And clearly there's some books that feature them together, even though when they never, <clears throat> even though when those two never met, they never really met. So 
Are you waged? And there's also the original Massey, 280 million years ago. That armored planty dinosaur believed be the forerunner of all. Well, armored dinosaurs like the stegosaur, the stegosaurs, which would pretty much be very similar to that of Scutellosaurus from North America, specifically Arizona. Which is the same exact state that Dilophosaurus, you know that thing from out of all movies, Jurassic Park, the first one, like the that looked like a giant frill lizard that did that spilled poison spit poison which it never did. So I way it would somewhat resemble Scoosaurus, except only only three times big, of course. Even though some of this information may be outdated by now, keep in mind this is only what I know, as I do with most of my videos. So I weigh been like three times bigger than school. Scoosaurus, of course, Scoosaurus being around 13 feet long, while Scoosaurus only 4 feet long. And there's also Sacrosaurus, that grew to be 12, 9 and a half feet long in real life. You know that, or probably just 6 and a half. Or nine feet long. Oh, okay. you know that small meteor, of course, Sid, from that story I read back a couple weeks ago, called Tod. If you saw that would be him. And there's Dimorphodon, that aerosaur with that V that goes like. Be one of the long tail pterosaurs and the short tail pterosaurs, the kind that pteranodon, everyone's favorite flying reptile, which technically is not really a dinosaur, evolved from a different branch of archosaur. So I really associate it being its own unique group, to be honest. And there's also that fossil site in the southern, on the south, easternmost tip of England along the coastline, of course, Dorset, where back in, where discovered, where those ichthyosaurs, where the first ichthyosaurs and plesiosaur fossils were believed to be found, by this young girl, 11 year old girl named. Mary Ann. And one of them included Romaliosaurus, which I've also mentioned in my obsession with dinosaurs. And also 
ichthyosaurus, around six feet long. There's the peculiar looking ichthyosaurus. Very much like your hinosaurus, except only stock. And there's also Baryonyx, Spicehorse's cousin, which has also been found in France, Spain, and Portugal, and Belgium. Belgium. Pretty much all over Western Europe. Almost all over Western Europe. Growing to around very three feet long and very feet long and nine feet tall, whilst its cousin Spisaurus being ten feet tall and fifty feet long, but on all fours, of course. And I think I've already mentioned multiple times in my videos course, the estimated size of Spinosaurus. So if you watch my videos on this stuff already, you would probably know how big it was already, but back to the top. And there's also, during the later half of the Jurassic and the Oxford Clay Formation, Stesnospondylus, which was depicted as only 19 feet long, but in real life it was 33 feet long. While Lyle Puridon being and walking with dinosaurs 82 feet long, when in real life on average it was only, it was just a little over 20 feet long, so I mean that he and I uh, mean that and Ophthalmosaur is being around 20 feet long as well. They're really about the same size. So really Ophthalmosaur really would need to worry about dealing with Nyoplerd on too much at all. And of course, and even more surprising enough by a board of being able to swim at only six miles per hour. So sure something t a reptilian looking creep. Something that looks like a mix between a turtle and a crocodile. Like the size of the largest recorded great white shark ever found would be frightening and also it would pretty much had a great sense of smell probably and also very powerful jaws and that would be found and there's also that stegosaur called the centuries and on the other wide there's Mantelosaur is the person responsible for naming it Wyandon, Gideon Mantel. Of course, in honor of him. Which proved about 23 feet long, while Neobinator around 26 to 30 feet long. About eight to nine feet tall. And it was around the same time that Iguanodon lived, which grew around on average 11 feet tall and 33 feet long and weighed four, three to five times. And 
So anyone who's seen Dinosaur, Disney's Dinosaur, would probably get a very good idea of what a Gwydon is being, which is the kind of dinosaur the main character of that movie, Aladar, is. There's also that one clay formation which contained fossils from the Miocene 10 to 15 million years ago. And of course, and that was when the Ice Age struck. So, which, at that point, it became a peninsula when the Earth ended up being much colder and drier when sea levels were insanely lower than they are now. Though, at some point, 400,000 years ago, of course, I got it from this same broadcast system. That may walk you with dinosaurs, EBC, of all things, where somehow most of Western Europe looked like Africa's Serengeti Plate. And of course, it was more of a temporary. Should I? But maybe I should trust it too much. And there's also very unusual food. A, a giant six foot long fish. And they're also known to be, and also they're Scotland being up for a mega Europe. The, which I've already explained multiple times before in my video. Which is happened to be two of the most well known creatures from that time period during the carnivores between 359 and 299 million years ago. As well as a giant 20 foot long low fin fish. During that time, as I found out from that one episode, River Monsters called Rise of God, where he's talking about prehistoric life, about the most dangerous river monsters of all time, even though we're not all the contenders for that video, for that episode lived in rivers. Of course, there were some that lived in oceans as well. Like Hope, Corpion, Dumpuyaski, and the Sicties, which actually seem to be common here in Germany. Also, Chile. And Raijin, of course. Even though when Raijin happened to be the only one out those four that actually lived in a river. So either way. Like I said, this is only what I know. Bring more information about this sometime later in the future, but as usual. Thanks for watching. And
would subscribe to me if you can. If you already have, please check my last video, my last two videos out. If you miss, in case you missed them. now on